Hi, everyone. Today, I am listening to a band by the name of Jefferson Airplane. And, well, fortunately, there are more Jeffersons in the world than just Thomas Jefferson, so I don't have to try to explain how they came up with Jefferson Airplane, although I don't know how, but probably not too difficult. Um, the song is going to be White Rabbit, and I have just a little bit to read about it. Jefferson Airplane was an American rock band formed in 1965, oh, kind of early-ish, and based in San Francisco, California, that became one of the pioneering bands of psychedelic rock. Jefferson Airplane received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2016. White Rabbit is a song written by Grace Slick and recorded by Jefferson Airplane for the 1967 album Surrealistic Pillow. Okay. Well, psychedelic rock, surrealistic pillow, it all works. It draws on imagery from Lewis Carroll's 1865 book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Oh, fun. And its 1871 sequel, Through the Looking Glass. It was released as a single and became the band's second top 10 success, peaking at number eight on the Billboard Hot 100. The song was ranked number 478 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time in 2004, number 483 in 2010, and number 455 in 2021. And it appears on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. In 1998, the song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Hmm, playing around with Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This could be a bit fun. Let's see how it sounds. This is a, is a really interesting combination. Um, okay, when I think of psychedelic rock, I'm thinking Pink Floyd. I guess that's the most solidly psychedelic rock band I've listened to to date. Um, so this is kind of fun because it's not at all Pink Floyd. I, I recognize certain sound qualities, but it's so different. I like this little kind of rat-a-tat-tat of the drums, kind of like a a marching drum. And and then the voice. Oh wow, when it came in, what a different voice and it's almost like it's um mm. It's coming from another world. One pill makes you larger and one pill makes you small and the ones that mother gives you don't do anything at all go ask Alice when she's ten feet tall and if you go chasing rabbits and you know you I love this voice. Tell them our hooker, smoking caterpillar, has given you the call, call Alice, when she was just small. Just had some kind of mushroom And your 
Okay. Believe it or not, I love that little piece. It's, um, uh, I'll tell you why I love it. Actually, there are several reasons why. First of all, this voice, she is good. She really knows how to take your, your uh, every little note and just string it along and carry you places and take a little loop and a turn and off you go even further and further. But musically, I love the way it starts so small and it is, it is a study in building up to a climax. And well, I guess there have been a, a, a few of those recently. Well, this one doesn't fall flat at all. It, it keeps you going. It's, you're sitting on the edge of your seat. You're waiting and waiting. And, and well, actually, at first, I didn't know how it was going to go, of course. I didn't know where it was going. I loved those first few lines. I wanted to hear them again. Uh, but then as the piece progressed and progressed, Ah, it's shifting up a little bit, little bit more. Oh, we're turning up, turning up the intensity some more. Ah, turn it up tighter. Wind the spring a bit tighter. We go tighter, we go tighter, and we go tighter. And, well, you know, I guess I shouldn't find it too surprising because Vlad told me that this, um, the one who composed this piece, um, let's see, I guess it's, uh, Grace Slick, who is also singing the piece, um, is also a painter. And so, she writes music, she sings, she paints. She has this idea of, she ha She seems to have mastered this concept of, um, mm, well, if I compare how she's singing to brush strokes and, and calligraphy and, you know, the way lines can move and shift and turn and a, li a little, a little bit thicker there, a little thinner there, a little bit of, um, decoration and then off we go again and, and I can, totally see how someone who is a singer and composer and also into visual arts could put something like this together. I love how compact it is. How long is this? Let's see. It's just two minutes and 34 seconds. Every second is important every single second. Um, I like how... Okay, so I've, I've mentioned her voice. I could go on about her voice, but let's talk about a few of the other things. In fact, let's, let's go back through and listen because it's so short and, and it goes by so quickly. Let's listen again so that we don't miss some of these wonderful elements. Okay, there's the bass entering. I didn't know what was happening in this first moment. I noticed what happened, but I didn't know why it was happening. Bum, 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 da -dum, bum, da -dum, bum, 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 da -dum, bum, da -dum, bum. Sounds like we're setting up a, a sort of a riff or, or ostinato rhythm for the bass, something going on. Oh, here come the drums. But then it shifts up. Bum, bum, da -dum, bum, da -dum, bum. Oh, that's kind of cool. We're going from, uh, well, let's see. Let's find these pitches here. Maybe we should do it down here. That's done. The range of the bass. So it's a it's a G flat to a D flat. Basically, one one five one five one. And here's what caught my ears because when it moves up, it doesn't move up to something that is part of the G sound world, the G-flat sound world. It's it's not part of the scale, the sequence. Um, we don't have... Because if we try to play that with what's here, let's just do it for fun. It doesn't work. It's, it's, it's off. It's out of tune. This is good. It sounds all wrong, doesn't it? Well, of course it does, because we move to a G natural. It's just a semitone up. We don't have these semitone movements from one to a neighbor chord unless you mess with the key signature, unless you mess with the sharps and flats that are um, built into the piece. Basically, you're moving to a different key center. 
And I was fascinated by that. It caught my attention right away. Oh, that's cool. We set a key and then we suddenly move sideways. It's kind of like, mm. have you ever seen a cat walking along, walking along, and suddenly something startles it. So he just scoots sideways really quickly. And then, of course, he tries to compose himself and pretend like it's all cool. And he goes on, he goes on some more. It's kind of like that with his music. What was that sideways skitter that happened? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, dum, bum, dum. I'm back home. Oh, and then suddenly, oh, we're going strange places. Back home. So there's this, there's this side by side, one here, one here, bum, 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 dum, bum, 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 dum, bum, 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 bum. And, and that caught my attention right away. I did not know how it was going to be used, but what a great use of it because it sets up from the very first couple of bars, the idea that we are going to be intensifying. We are going to be moving upwards. We're going to be turning the screws tighter. And it's not really evident immediately to the first listen that that is what's going to happen because it could go anywhere. It could do anything from that point. But as the piece progresses, oh wow, it just builds and a little bit here and a little bit there. Let's keep going through. So we have, the, oh, the other thing, <laughs> before I forget, I was thinking as I was listening, I have mentioned Ravel's Bolero several times in several different contexts. It's such a convenient reference point um, because most people know it. You've heard it somewhere and it's such a powerful piece of music. So it makes a great reference point for several different things. But one of the things that it does is it, ha it has this build up this progression of tension all the way through the piece, all the way, all the way, all the way to the end. Now, this is not using Ravel's bolero rhythm. Neither is it using his instrumentation or anything like that. It's not a, an imitation of bolero. However, it's in a way, it's a sort of miniature of the same techniques, setting up an ostinato and then having having the other stuff happening around it simply increase in intensity increase in intensity turn up the heat build up the pressure bring the pitch up a little bit whatever you need to do but it's this it's this driving home of a little bit of musical musical material in an ever increasingly uh, urgent way that happens here as well. Here comes the guitar. Still kind of easy. One pill makes you larger and one pill makes you small and the ones that mother gives you don't do voice. anything Turns. Okay, now we're stepping up a bit higher, aren't we? Back to this. And you can hear the ostinato kind of sinking into us at this point. This voice just rides the waves and swirls around. Now here we have had a sort of a an increase in in instrumentation intensity, a little more percussion, bum 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 bum, building up a little crescendo happening, while the voice is peacefully, calmly going its own way here. Listen to it down there, but the instruments are building up. And that gives a new table on which the voice can suddenly step in. And here we go. And 
Building up even more. Here comes the percussion um, ostinato again. You can hear the bass, same shape. Ah, there we go again. A little higher, a little higher. And her voice is up to it. A little bit more. A little bit. A little bit more. Everybody's moving up, moving up. Stronger, stronger. Still keep it going. Feed, feed, feed the intensity, feed the intensity, feed the intensity. Boom, it's over. That's it. <laughs> well, white rabbit going down the rabbit hole. Oh, you never know where you're going to end up, what you're going to meet, what experiences you're going to have. I love the imagery that comes into this. Um, it sounds a little bit mm, psychedelic in the message of the lyrics as well, but but the idea of playing with the, something as classic as Alice in Wonderland um, and then as classic as this musical format is great. It's really great. When would I listen to a piece like it's it's a funny little piece in a way because um it's it's it almost feels like it should be a prequel to something like um it's so short it's so compact it's so perfectly formed in its own right but at the same time it leaves you feeling like shouldn't there be something coming after this if I listen to this, am I going to just listen to this as a standalone piece and be done? Is this the sort of thing? In a way, it is. It's the sort of thing that can be stand completely on its own. Just because it's so, it's so great on its own. Although it feels like mm, there's, there should be something after it. Um, I guess I would call it a bit of an appetizer. But what a perfect appetizer. You know, sometimes, sometimes a really great appetizer, you can make a meal out of it. <laughs> well, that's my first exposure to Jefferson Airplane, and what fun! Uh, this was White Rabbit, and now I have to ask, um, this was released as a single, and it was the band's second top 10 success, which makes me wonder, what was their first one? So, maybe I should listen to their first one as well? Can I do that sometime? <laughs> I mean, I want to explore their music a bit more. First of all, because this one is so great musically. Secondly, I have fallen in love with the singer. I guess um, I need to get that name Grace Slick stuck in my mind as a singer that... Oh, what a great voice. At least here in this first exposure, loads of fun. So I will be exploring more of Jefferson Airplane sometime in the future. And I hope that I find some other great stuff by them as perfect as this, because what a gem this is. Lots of fun. I'll see you soon. <laughs>